Good afternoon, good evening. Thank you, my dear Khaldun. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for being with us. So, after the future of energy, let's talk about something which is full of energy, sport. Let's talk about the future of sport. In fact, COVID-19 has impacted, as you know, and as you can guess, the ecosystem of sport. We can uh, spend much more than these 25 minutes that we have, unfortunately, to talk about how COVID-19 is impacting competition, calendars, operating models, commercial relationship with broadcasters, sponsors, the fan engagement, and so far and so on. But let's try at least to review with my prestigious guests how they see the future of sport. So, on my right, our host tonight, Badr al Qadi, who is the advisor to the Ministry of Sport from Saudi Arabia. On my left, Alejandro Agag, who is the man behind Formula E. And I would like to thank Her Excellency and my dear friend, Dr. Amina Mohammed, who is now apparently in Monaco, if I'm not mistaken, but she is a Minister of Sport, Culture Heritage of Kenya, and a great, a great lady from Africa, which I personally admire. And one of her best friends, who is Jean Todd, my dear friend, and uh, the, he the man behind the International Federation of Automotive, the man who had multiple world championships in Formula One at his, uh, I would say, portfolio and credentials. And we will be joined later by another specific guest. So I would like, you know, lady, gentlemen, we have 23 minutes. We have so many questions to ask you. So let's agree on one principle. Let's try to have as short as possible your answers to allow me to ask you so many questions. Let's have this session full of energy. Are you ready, guys? OK, ready. so let's go. Let's go, and I would like to start with you, my dear brother. We cannot ignore a question on how COVID-19 is impacting all sport disciplines. And what are the measures government and Saudi Arabia in particular are taking or should take to the sport industry? Because frankly speaking, for the past few weeks, I think there is a Saudi miracle about sport. You hosted the Dakar a few weeks ago. You are hosting Formula E in a few weeks. You will be hosting Formula One in November, inshallah. So tell us, please, what is the impact? Sure, thank you, Richard. So uh, let me start by, first of all, apologize on behalf of uh, Prince Abdelaziz, who was supposed to be part of this panel, and clearly such chairs were designed for someone like him, and uh, would have been more interesting to have him on board, yet thanks for having me. Uh, to answer your question on the impact of COVID, obviously COVID has impacted um, us like everywhere else in the world, and um, the health authorities in Saudi Arabia are, are, are clearly monitoring and taking uh, measures uh, against the uh, COVID. We have adapted our plans, and the, the adaptation of our plans uh, continue to be with investment and delivery of uh, projects. Um, our passion for sport continue to be uh, as it used to be always, and uh, a matter of fact, the search for the term uh, physical exercising have increased by 96% in Google search. So this is just during the pandemic. Um, during the pandemic as well, we have actually uh, hosted uh, Dakar, as you said. We have secured a new partnership with Formula One. Uh, uh, lots of other activities taking place. Uh, we launched the Math Sport Academy, and we also uh, announced our uh, bid for the uh, hosting the Asian Cup in 2027. And last but not least, uh, we got the right to host the Asian Games in uh, 2034 uh, in here in Riyadh. So this COVID-19 pandemic at least is giving you time to build a fantastic strategy. That's absolutely and right. Alejandro, my friend, the season, your season of Formula E was supposed to start a few days ago in Chile. And unfortunately, you were obliged to postpone to later this year. And the first race will be by good coincidence in a few days, in a few weeks, in fact, in Riyadh. So why the race could happen in Saudi Arabia and why it is possible? Well, thank you, Richard. And uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, Yasser Mayan is my fourth uh, FII. Uh, I'm super happy to be here again. 
Next year, we give you a medal. A medal, a record. Um, but oh, five years loyalty. And you know, the reason why we, we have had to cancel so many races around the world, but we are going to do the race here, is because here things work. And doing Dakar was like a miracle. And you know, credit to the fantastic team in the Ministry of Sports, uh, led by uh, Prince Abdulaziz bin Turki, in the Federation, uh, led by Prince Khaled bin Faisal. I mean, the day they were going to do Dakar, they stopped all the flights into Saudi. And they were able to organize all these charter flights, 3,500 people, to come here and do a race. So that's why Formula E will start the season here in Daraya. Nothing is impossible here, trust me. Nothing is impossible. So, my friend Jean, I hope you hear us well. And thank you for being here. If we first, I think you are in Switzerland, no? Jean? I am in Geneva in my office, yes. And thank I, you. I was in Saudi two weeks ago. Yeah, precisely. This is part of my question. You were with us in Saudi Arabia two weeks ago. And uh, at, this, at the occasion of the Dakar, what did you take precisely from your recent visit, Jean? I mean, it was uh, not my first experience because uh, I had the opportunity of uh, coming several times. And incidentally, I was uh, also in Saudi for the first time Formula E was uh, hosted together with my uh, friend uh, Alessandro. And I must say it was uh, one historical date because it was the first time that uh, women were allowed to participate uh, to a motor racing event and to drive. So that was just a kind of a, a game uh, changer. And um, the Dakar in Saudi had been a great experience for different reasons. I mean, the, the desert, the roads, the organization, the culture, the hospitality has been absolutely unique and uh, outstanding. And uh, you mentioned earlier and uh, also the representative of the sport minister mentioned, I mean, all those new international events which are arriving. We mentioned uh, Dakar. Incidentally, we are working very closely together uh, with uh, the Federation, uh, Sam Prince Khalid, and the promoter uh, to make something more global with uh, the FIA. Uh, you mentioned in four weeks uh, Formula E. Uh, I'm sure Alexandro will speak about uh, his new baby, Extreme E, Formula One early in December. So I'm very happy to see this uh, promotion around motorsport with a very strong will to be efficient and to have excellency about all those events. Jean, uh, you recently said in an interview, I would like to quote you, unfortunately, no it's not over. Mm -hmm. You were talking about COVID-19. It's not like the season is ending. We start from a white piece of paper. Lockdown is still going to happen. Confinement, the virus is there. Could you share with us your vision on the global situation in the automotive, I would say, sport industry? And what could we expect in terms of financial and economic impact, please, Jean? Jean, were you able to hear me? Maybe he didn't hear you. I, I, Jean, are you with us? I am with you, but uh, I did not get your question. Okay, so I, I will repeat very quickly the question. You recently said in an interview that, unfortunately, it's not over. You were talking about COVID-19 pandemic. It's not like the season is ending. We start from a white piece of paper. Lockdown is still going to happen. The virus is still there. Could you share with us your vision on the global situation in the automotive sport industry? And what could we expect in terms of financial and economic impact since we are here at an investment conference? Okay. So, I mean, clearly, I mean, uh, if one year ago somebody would have mentioned the situation we have been facing now since March, no, nobody could have believed that. Unfortunately, it has happened. In a way, uh, it is an experience uh, we will learn from it, but uh, it has had and it will have some serious uh, financial consequences 
and uh, damage. And clearly, creativity has been essential. Because the easy thing was, OK, we wait until the situation is settled. When will it be settled? We know, and, uh, and I mean, we follow that uh, hour by hour, day by day, and country by country. I mean, the first, uh, I would say, emergency topic is uh, when the global population will have access uh, to vaccination. So it will take uh, some time. And uh, the world is nevertheless uh, moving, and uh, as I was mentioning, creativity is absolutely essential. And uh, you mentioned earlier, being able to host uh, Formula One to reach shape the calendar, to do the same on Formula E, to do the same on all the championship, and also if we extend that to other sports around the world. And um, we, we already see that, uh, and you mentioned, you mentioned uh, we should have been in, in Chile uh, two weeks back. We could not be there for Formula E, and the first race uh, will be uh, in uh, one month uh, in, uh, in Saudi. It's the same. We have to reshape the calendar of, of uh, Formula One. We will be in Australia, and we will start with uh, Bahrain the last uh, weekend uh, of March. So we, we need uh, also to be very, very cautious, very cautious about uh, how contagion, uh, contagious is uh, the, the virus. So a lot of effort need to be done, and all that without spectators. So, I mean, it's a financial burden, but still for me it's absolutely essential that we are able to cope with the situation until we will be back to normal. You ask, thank, thank when do you think we will be back to normal in hosting a motorsport event? I would say probably in uh, July, August, things uh, should improve. In the meantime, uh, we need, uh, as I said earlier, creativity and uh, effort, global effort, to make sure that we can, we can make it. So it means working with our promoters, with the governing body, and with the competitors. Thank you, Jean, but le let's be optimistic, uh, because, because Dr. Amina Mohamed has very good news for us. And uh, Kenya, Dr. Amina, Kenya will not wait July. Kenya will host very soon the FIA World Rally Championship Safari Rally. Just the word safari is making me dreaming. And if uh, you agree, we will visit you in June after 18 years break from the WRC Global Circuit. So how was the journey to bringing the Safari Rally back to Kenya? And what are the expected benefits from the country in this context of COVID-19? Dr. Amina. Dr. Amina. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Richard. And thank you very much for inviting me. And, and let me just uh, thank all the organizers for putting this together. Now, we, we are really, really happy and we're very, very proud uh, to have this opportunity to host the Safari Rally once again. As you said, after a break of 18, 18 years, and I really want to thank uh, my, my dear friend Jean Todd uh, for walking uh, you know, this journey with us uh, when we went back to, to uh, FIA in uh, 2013 and requested uh, that they help us rearrange, reorganize, uh, re-energize our team so that we can again host uh, a successful Safari Rally. Uh, Jean Todd came over and he has been extremely, extremely uh, supportive. And, and so we had the candidate event last year. Uh, even with the candidate event, we had a lot of uh, engagement with countries in our region, uh, but also beyond the region. Uh, you know, people remember the Safari Rally. Thank you, Thank you. Dr. Um, Alejandro. What are innovations and potential business model change in Formula E? You hear me? Yeah, if we look at what's happening um, with COVID, I think this is going to have an impact on the business models across the board in every business. Uh, it doesn't change for motorsport. I think this decade is a decade of climate action. I think if you're not on the climate action direction, uh, you, won't, you won't be able to have success in this decade. Formula E and Extreme E are promoting 
electric motorsport. And I think they're uniquely placed to uh, drive the wave that is going to happen towards climate action. I think, and I've said it many times, I think Formula One will eventually have to become electric. The thing is they cannot do it because we have an exclusive license for the next 19 years. Uh, thank you, Mr. President of FIA, who is actually... Jean, he's uh, provocating you. Huh? You need to listen to that, Jean. Who is not, but Jean is actually, Jean is actually the, the, the real... The, uh, you know, I'm behind the promotion of Extreme e, uh, Formula E, but Jean is actually the real man with the idea of creating Formula E. So credit to him. But I think the world is going on that direction. The business model is going on that direction. If you're not on the fight against climate change, you won't have success this decade. Jean, uh, just a short answer from your side. Um, recently, the ex Art Aston Martin boss, and I was personally a little bit surprised, said to the British Prime Minister, build batteries or lose UK car industry. I'm cutting him. Build batteries or loss or lose UK car industry. How do you react to this uh, very strong statement? I mean, uh, we must be realistic. You know, it's, uh, of course, uh, we, the world is changing, and uh, we we will have uh, we have already access to new technologies. And uh, in, in a way, I'm quite uh, proud that together with uh, uh, our team, with uh, Alessandro, we had the vision of uh, creating a Formula E championship, which is occurring in cities. Why? because we want to have more electric car in cities. But at the moment, I mean, it's not realistic to think that you will be able to do long distance, unique, only with electric uh, technology, because it's a long time to recharge, and it will with the autonomy of the um, combustion and uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, start, we're, we're starting to lose you, Jean. Uh, Sorry. So we'll come back to you soon. I think we have a, a, a problem of connection with Geneva. But uh, back to also what we just discussed. How KSC, how the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is moving forward on sport about the ecosystem that you are building. Can you share with us your ambition, your vision? Sure. So uh, with the tremendous backing that we're having from the government, all the way from uh, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, we definitely believe on the sustainability and the long-term planning for sport. Actually, best practices has taught us that there are no shortcuts in achieving sport goals. Our national sports strategy uh, focuses a lot on the private sector engagement to ensure sustainable growth of the sports sector. Having said that, uh, His Royal Highness uh, Prince Abdulaziz bin Turkil Faisal, the Minister of Sport, um, uh, spoke lately about the introduction of the um, uh, uh, the introduction of basically the licensing program. This licensing program would ensure that we grow the private sector engagement and we offer them more opportunities to participate on the sports sector. Having said that, let's look at the example of the UK. The UK today with a population of 66 million versus Saudi with a population of 33 million. In the UK, they have 7,500 clubs. In Saudi, we have 170 clubs only. So look at the gap. They have 1.6 million registered athletes on different sport disciplines. In Saudi, we have less than 50,000 registered athletes. Having said that, um, private sector licensing and having uh, private clubs participating in the leagues and so on would open up more opportunities for people to participate on sport and move forward. Having said that, I'll conclude with we have done the um, uh, the club support strategy, the governance, the technology, and the introduction of the Mahd Academy, and all these initiatives would ensure a sustainable growth of the sports sector. Dr. Amina, uh, talking about country strategies on sport, Kenya has also cut a strong image of organizing global sporting events. Uh, the country, Kenya, hosted the World Under-18 Championships in 2017, and is scheduled to host the World Under-20 Championship in August 2021. You are also bidding 
to host the World Athletic Championships in 2025. So how all these events contribute to the growth of sports in Kenya in, I would say, the post-COVID-19 era? Dr. Amina. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, the, the nurturing of talent, because we have to prepare all of them. We have to, at least, to make sure that they can compete effectively. And we have a great athletic organization. We will remain at the cutting I, I, I will, of I will, we will come back to you. We have to fix the quality of the connection. We'll come back to you if you give me one minute. But talking about, um, about, uh, I would say, athletism, I would like now to turn to one of my, I'm sure you are sharing that, one of my personal heroes, a man who, it's very selfish, in fact. I, I wanted to please myself, Your Excellency, so forgive me for being a little bit selfish to, to tonight, because we have with us live from Jamaica, and I would like really to thank you, Yusen. We have Yusen Bolt. Please, a round of applause for the eight, eight Olympic gold medal, 11 world champion. There is only one Yusen Bolt. So Yusen, I have, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for what you do with your amazing foundation. And I hope that you will visit us in Saudi Arabia very soon. So, Yusen, I have one question for you. If there is one iconic image, always, when you win, when you run, is you stopping with this fantastic arrow in front of these amazing spectators who are, I am sure, part of the energy which is making you a champion. So my question to you is very simple. How your colleagues, your pairs, will continue to perform, will continue to break world records without spectators. And what will happen in Japan in a few months? Yuzen, thank you for being with us, please. Uh, well, for me personally, I know it, it's going to be hard for them because personally I enjoy having the fans in the stadium. But as professional athletes, I know we know they're watching and they expect the same entertainment and the same energy and the same drive. So I feel it's still going to be great because athletes still want to win and still want to be uh, the best they can get. So personally, I feel like on the track, uh, no matter what it is, racing or any form of sports, people are just driven by the fact that they want to, that they want to put on a good show. So I know the fact that they know people are watching on TV, they will perform a day better. But I look forward to the day when they're actually back in the stadium to share you on the stadium, give you that energy, because that's what I personally love. Which advice are you giving to other champions? Which advice to keep the momentum, to keep the energy? What are you telling as a mentor to your colleagues? I tell them, just remember your dream. Remember what you want. Remember why you started uh, uh, doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? You just got to focus on that and push on. I know it's going to be hard. But just keep your mind on the prize and you'll be fine. Thank you, Yuzen. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. And we look forward to welcome you in, uh, in Riyadh very soon. Or I'm, I'm excited. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Excellent. Done deal. Thank you. Dr. Amina, <laughs> if we have a better connection, thank you, Yuzen. If we have a better connection, we go back to Dr. Amina. If you can... Uh, hear us and answer to the question about the how sport events and how all the competition you are bidding for will help the sport industry in Kenya and have a positive economic impact on the country. Dr. Amina? Uh, well, I think that whenever you have a sport, whenever you have a sporting event, there's a really positive uh, impact on your, uh, the economic life of, of the city that you think uh, all the social life people, uh, but most importantly, you actually have a direct impact on your sportsmen and women because they prepare for these events, they get to fight. You improve your facilities, and I think that's true of all of us who are hosting the event. But as we know that we are hosting this event, we improve all our facilities, all our infrastructure, make sure that. Uh, so the impact is usually really amazing, it's great. And for Kenya, we are known to. Very, very good. Apart from those that you have, 
We are also hosting the Rugby Bethesda Cup. Uh, we are going to be hosting the Continental Tour. Uh, you know, Richard, even in the middle of the pandemic, we were able to host many events in our country. Uh, just making sure that uh, we adhere to all the measures we are expected to adhere to. Many sportsmen and women, those that were coming in from outside the country, that all of them were safe, that they were secure, and they knew that the country all the measures that were necessary uh, to protect them. So we had a very, very eventful uh, continental tour here in, uh, in August, uh, actually right in the middle of the pandemic. But we also had many other events. We have gone back to sporting events. We have put our protocols in place. So our league matches are back on. Our uh, basketball matches are back on. And uh, we're just making sure that we take care of our athletes. Thank God we haven't had any incidents yet. And I think it just uh, is uh, the expertise that we have, uh, to the commitment we have to our young people who are in the sporting uh, space. And, and so, so I think that that has always been a And I think that we are as a sporting uh, giant, and we want to maintain uh, that, that, uh, that commitment. And that's why we are bidding uh, for the uh, World Championship, uh, because now we have hosted all the other events Thank you, Dr. Amina. Alejandro, final word, please. Back to the strategies of the countries, Formula E in a few weeks. So how Formula E complements what is becoming now a key strategy for many countries like Saudi Arabia about the aspiration for sustainability? Well, you know, for us, Saudi Arabia and Formula E, it's a very special relation. We were very lucky to be here, to be invited to participate in the change in Saudi Arabia. Our first event here was shortly after uh, women were allowed to drive in the country. It was the first time they had big concerts, everybody together. This was, of course, under the inspiration of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince. And we were so lucky to be part of that. So for Formula E, Saudi became a very special place. This is like a special place in our heart of Formula E is Saudi Arabia. We are so happy to be able to contribute even a small part on this fantastic change. Thank you, Alejandro. Better the last word. What can you tell to the 8,000 people who are watching us online from 94 countries and to the people who are here in the audience with us in Riyadh? Because I see and I saw the past few hours many hugs, people so happy to see each other. We are missing the olas in the stadium. So what can you tell to all of us? So let me start with a statement that basically the role of sports in our uh, country's vision is immeasurable. And if I may answer you with three things, I would tell you that in participation, our mass participation, the number shows that is working and has increased from 13% to 23%. Our aim is to achieve a 40% and we are on track toward achieving this. This is number one. Number two, diversity and female participation in sport more than doubled over the past uh, three years. And last but not least is the private sector engagement and GDP contribution. Our GDP contribution has grown from 2.4 billion rial in 2016 to 6.9 billion rial on 2000. Almost $2 billion. $2 billion. <laughs> Actually more, almost tripled. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes. Yes, <laughs> so uh, th those three measures are, are very important to us to measure in our national sports strategy. Uh, and we are heading on the right direction toward achieving it. So with these very positive and optimistic words, I would like to thank you all for watching this uh, Future of Sports session and uh, cannot wait to welcome you very soon as spectators, as fans, to all these amazing sport events. So let's be optimistic and let's fight and win this COVID-19. Thank you all. Thank you.